Hello and welcome to Christ Central Sunday. We're so excited that so many of you are able to join us online or through your local Christ Central Church. We really are a worldwide family of churches meeting together. Jeremy Simpkins is going to speak to you in just a moment, but before he does that, I want to give you three really important updates. Firstly, this year the Jubilee Plus Conference will be happening but like many other things, it will be happening online on Saturday the 7th of November. Main speakers will be Martin Charlesworth and Rachel Gardner. So you can find out more about this event by going to jubilee-plus.org. Maybe you've always wanted to go. Well, this year you can go from the comfort of your own home. Secondly, Martin Charlesworth and Natalie Williams have brought out a new book called A Call to Act. This is a really vital tool for churches, small groups and individuals to get hold of. It includes a video and topics to mull over. I've not read it, but here is a quote from somebody who has. A Call to Act demonstrates that in order to engage with poverty and need, we must re-evaluate our own attitudes and adopt a poverty-busting lifestyle. There are challenges to embracing a life of simplicity, but these are broken down into ideas for action. Apparently, there is also a chapter which covers the current coronavirus pandemic, so it's really helpful, up-to-date and practical. Thirdly, I want to invite you all to Devoted 2021. It was really wonderful that so many people worldwide joined us for our online event in August. But this year, the team are preparing for and praying into the event happening in person at Staffordshire Showground in the UK. We've got great speakers. We've got Mike Pedavacci from Soul Survivor, Toppy Collioso from Jubilee Church London, and Natalie Williams from Jubilee Plus. We've also got Lou and Nathan Fenningham leading us in a time of worship and the usual fantastic fun packed children's activities, children's program for young people will be happening too. So all you need to do is to go to devotedevent.org to book. Right, that's it, I finished. All the notices are done. So all we have to do now is to invite the very cheery, the very smiley, and the very encouraging Jeremy Simpkins. Hi everyone, welcome to our Christ Central Sunday, or it actually might be a Friday if you're listening to this in the Middle East. Uh, isn't it great to be together as a family of churches? Uh, I think we're something like 275 different Christ Central churches across 25 different nations. Uh, yet we can come together. We can't be physically present, but actually through the wonders of technology, we can be together just like this. And uh, wasn't it wonderful to be together with our devoted online service. I, I was so thrilled to see so many people joining in with that thousands and thousands of hits on our YouTube channels and uh, thank you for uh, downloading it, showing it on, on, on your meetings. Thank you for participating in that but most of all thank you for your incredible generosity as you gave into our COVID-19 appeal. One of the highlights of that uh, devoted meeting for me online was to hear the reports from our brothers and sisters right across Africa uh, and to see how the money that you gave so generously for the relief of poverty uh, has gone to bless, encourage, stir and strengthen our brothers and sisters in Africa. And uh, just to say, we've raised over £150,000 now uh, through our appeals this year for the poor and the needy. And that's not just gone to Africa now. We've been able to get into Mexico, Bolivia, uh, into Europe and some of the struggling nations, Romania. And more recently, uh, we've been able to help our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. And uh, I want you to watch this video now, uh, just them telling you what that's meant to them and uh, hearing their heart. So let's hear a thank you from our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. Hello, I'm Igor Bogomas and I'm leading this vehicle Triumphant Grace in Ukraine. We're sending greetings to all Christ Central Churches, Jeremy and Ann Simpkins and the Apostolic Team. 
We would like to express our gratitude for the funds you collected to help those who are impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic and the quarantine. A lot of people in our country are going through an economic crisis, as many have lost their jobs or their income has decreased. Thanks to your donations, we are working in 14 Ukrainian cities. Hundreds of families will feel God's love and you are a part of this work. We are now turning over to some of our leaders in their towns. Hello, my name is Tanya and I'm from Kropovnitsky. Our church is involved in social work helping those in need. Thanks to Christ Central Funds, we will help 10 families with food and 7 people with medicine. These people were highly affected by the COVID lockdown. Hi dear friends, my name is Roman Obrazov. I'm the pastor of the Church of the Living God in Kharkiv. Our church is using the money received from Christ Central Churches to help prepare five children for school, pay for medical tests and treatment for two people, and buy shoes for two children and five adults. Thank you for your involvement. Hello dear friends, my name is Viktor Palunin. I am pastor in church in Kyiv and we thank you for money given to us. We are going to use them for humanitarian aid, medical needs and uh, food parcels for families who suffered through the time of lockdown. Thank you. Hello, I am Joseph. My name is Alessia. I am a pastor in Rakhiv town, uh, Transcarpathia. We wanted to say thank you to Christ Center Churches for sending us funds for medicine and medical treatment to our brothers and sisters. May the Lord bless you, friends. Hi, my name is Vitali. I'm representing two churches of the Living God. We will use the funds received from Christ Central Churches to help six people with medical treatment, provide food parcels to 80 people, and help 10 children prepare for school. We're spending your funds in three main areas. Firstly, we will help the poor who are in urgent need of medicine, food and clothes. Secondly, we will help church pastors of our sphere who were impacted the most by the quarantine. Thirdly, we are using 20% of the amount received to develop and advance social businesses. Our sphere of churches started growing in 2014. It was a time of intensive hostilities in the east of Ukraine. Many people and whole families fled the area trying to escape shelling and bombardments. People who moved to different towns like Kropovnitsky, Kiev, Irpin, Vasilkov, Kharkiv, Uzhgorod began spontaneously planting new churches. Many young potential people, young families, left Ukraine to go to Europe, trying to escape the economic hardships. Therefore, while developing these new local churches, we always feel short of ministers. So we decided to turn to Christ Central Churches and invite those who are willing to join this missionary work in Ukraine for the period of three to five years. In Acts 16 verses 8 and 9, we read a wonderful story. While in Troas, Paul sees a vision of a man of Macedonia who comes and asks him for help. Obeying the voice of God, Apostle Paul travels the places of Alexander the Great's military campaign, who said, My sword will unite the West and the East. Knowing the Alexander story, Apostle Paul might have thought, the sword of Alexander wasn't able to unite the West and the East, but the Gospel of Jesus Christ can do this. What do you think, my friends? We believe that our friendship and partnership will unite the West and the East together for one global mission.
needs. So we would like to invite you to join this work in Ukraine. Here is how you can get in touch with us. Thank you, that was great to hear from our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. Now I want to pick up and develop the theme that we started at our devoted event. We talked about us being servants, us displaying servanthood, to quote the prophetic that Ginny brought to us, us being the Joseph generation that arises to serve the world, to be the rescuers, those who bring hope and deliverance, those who bring light into darkness. And to do that, it's ever so important that we understand who we are. We understand what we minister out of. But primarily, servanthood is our posture, but it's not our position. Our position is that we're in Christ. Our position is that we're sons and daughters of the King. Our position is that we're royalty. Our position is that we have access to the Father through Christ by the power of the Spirit. But our posture is that we serve. Just like Jesus, you see, it says in John chapter 13, that Jesus, knowing exactly who he was, knowing where he had come from and knowing where he was going, nevertheless, got up and took the towel and washed the disciples' feet. We're not to be like the prodigal son who, on his way back, said, well, even the servants uh, can eat and perhaps I'll just go back and be a servant. No, the father run to him and said, this is my son who was dead, but now is alive, puts rings on his finger and puts the robes on him and the sandals on him, the, the signs of sonship. Dear friends, we're in Christ. The DNA of the Lord Jesus is in us and upon us. And we serve because of our connectivity to him. We become Christ-like because we're in Christ. And Jesus could have demanded such honour, he could have demanded such respect, but actually, as it says in Philippians chapter 2, our attitude should be just like the Lord Jesus. Although he was in very nature God, didn't consider equality with God as something to be grasped and held on to, but actually made himself as nothing, taking on the very nature of of a servant. And that's what we're to do. You see, servanthood isn't something that you train in or graduate in. It's not kind of like a stepping stone to greatness. Oh, we start with servanthood and then we put that aside. No, servanthood isn't a stepping stone to greatness. It is greatness. It's being just like Jesus. And I love that scene. We haven't got time to unpack it this morning, but I love that scene in uh, Mark chapter 10, when the disciples have been squabbling amongst themselves on the road, who's the greatest? And Jesus says this, and uh, he kind of pulls together two Old Testament themes, two Old Testament characters and applies them to himself. And he says this, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And we're called to be like Jesus. And Jesus brought those two themes together. The two themes are, first of all, of the Son of Man from Daniel's vision. And uh, I guess when I was a, a child at Sunday school, uh, I thought when Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man, that was kind of his humanity. And when Jesus referred to himself as the Son of God, that was his divinity and uh, brought those things together. But actually, the Son of Man is a royal title. It's a wonderful title of power and authority. It comes from Daniel chapter 7, and this is what it says in Daniel. In my vision, there before me was one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. And he approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. And he was given glory, authority and sovereign power. And all nations and people of every language worshipped him. And his dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. When Jesus says, even the son of man, he's talking about this glorious one with power and authority comes to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And that brings us to the kind of second theme that Jesus talks about in Mark chapter 10. 
he then talks about serving and giving his life as a ransom for many. And that's a reference to the suffering servant. It's a reference to the servant in Isaiah. And particularly, we read about that in Isaiah 40 to 55, particularly Isaiah 53, where this mysterious servant-like messianic figure comes to give his life. We don't understand, but somehow in his shameful death, the suffering servant is going to bring freedom, true freedom to God's people. Now, the people in Jesus' time, the Jews of his time, didn't understand what freedom was all about. They misinterpreted, they thought freedom was freedom from the oppression of Rome and the tyranny and the enslavement that they had politically. But actually Jesus had come as the suffering servant. Jesus had come to give his life, not to free us from the tyranny of Rome, but to free us from the tyranny of sin, that which enslaved us. Jesus said, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And the suffering servant came to give his life and to pay the penalty for our sin. So when he died on the cross, his sacrifice was the ransom. He was paying the price that should have been on our head. He willingly took it upon himself, paid the price and in doing so broke us free from the slavery and the tyranny of sin to now be free. Now, I don't think people fully understand freedom. The world certainly doesn't understand it. It talks a lot about freedom in our society at the moment. The truth is this. We're never truly free in some neutral way. We're either under the power and tyranny of sin, enslaved to sin, or if Jesus gloriously breaks those chains. And if you're not a believer this morning, looking at this video, Jesus wants to break your chains of addiction. He wants to break your chains of lust and greed and temper. He wants to break your chains and bring you into a glorious freedom from sin, but a freedom to obey him and live for him. See, Paul talks about this in Romans chapter six. And he says this, you've been set free from sin, hallelujah, that you might become slaves to God. It's interesting, isn't it? We become his. We become owned by him. It's like now we're once enslaved to sin, but now we're enslaved to him. There's this inward pull in our hearts towards holiness, towards mercy, towards grace. It's these chains of love that now pull us. And I think if we're going to talk about servanthood, we need to understand that love and lordship go together. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And we need to know the love of God compels us, constrains us, motivates us forward. But also it's the lordship of Jesus that we're no longer our own. And even as we come to this great offering, your money. Is it yours or is it his? He's the Lord. Let me give you a modern day parable. I, I love the writings of Charles Swindle, a great evangelical preacher and teacher of the word of God. And in his book called uh, Improving Your Serve, he talked, he kind of gave this modern day parable uh, about the pearl of great price. I'm just going to read it to you now. Just imagine this uh, man who's been searching all his life for the greatest price, the greatest pearl. And he comes across in a shop, this great pearl, and he wants to buy it. And this is what the conversation is between the pearl seller and uh, the man seeking the great pearl. I want this pearl, how much is it? Well, the seller says, it's very expensive. But how much, we ask? Well, a very large amount. But do you think I could buy it? Oh, of course. Everyone can buy it. But didn't you say it was very expensive? Yes, I did. Well, how much is it? Everything you have, the seller says. We make up our minds. We think, OK, all right, we'll buy it. Well, what do you have? The seller says. He wants to know. Let's write it down. Well, I have £10,000 in the bank. Be impressed. OK, good. We'll write that down. Anything else? What do you mean anything else? 
Well, I've had a few pounds here in my pocket. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can find. Oh, 20, 40, 60, 80, oh, 100 pounds. Good, that's fine. What else do you have? What do you mean, what else do I have? Well, where do you live? Well, I live in my house. Yes, I have a house. Oh, the house too, he says, becomes mine. But then I'll have to live in my caravan. You have a caravan. Caravan becomes mine, but then I'll have to live in my car. You have a car. Well, yes, two of them. Both become mine. What else? Well, what do you mean, what else? You, you already have my money, my, my house, my caravan, my cars. Are you alone in this world? Well, well no, I have a wife and two children. Oh, oh yes, your wife and children too. They become mine. But, I, but I'm alone now. I have nothing left. And then suddenly the seller exclaims. Oh, I almost forgot. You yourself too. Everything becomes mine. Wife, children, houses, money, cars, caravans, and you too. And then he goes on. Now listen. I will allow you to use all these things for the time being. But don't forget that they are mine just as you are mine. And whenever I have need of any of them, you must give them up because I am now the owner. Isn't it wonderful that Jesus has bought us with a price? The Son of God loved us and gave himself for us. Jesus didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He's paid the price We've been bought, dear friends, by the price of the blood of Christ. This is what Peter says. It was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed, but it was with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. So when we're thinking about servanthood, we need to understand these two things. We need to understand it's all about love. The Son of God loved me and gave himself for me, if you love me. But it's also about lordship. If you love me, keep my commandments. He has paid the price. He is now the owner. He's the boss. He's the governor. What's all this got to do with giving? Everything, because it's all his. I'm not appealing to you to give some of your money. I'm asking you to ask him, what would he have you put in this great offering? It's all his. And when it comes to things like money, it tests our attitude. Do we really, have we really given all to him? Have we really understood that he's the owner? Have we un really understood that he's Lord, that he's the Messiah, the one who's ruling? He's the son of man, ascended with power and glory and authority and all the worship and the wonder and the might and the majesty goes to him. Have we understood that that affects how we live? In this context, it affects our pockets. But this is not a heavy thing. This is love and lordship. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I love what Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, uh, whole chapters about finance and giving. And it culminates in this massive statement when he says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We want you to know about the grace of God that he's given to the Macedonian churches. Now, the Macedonian churches were really poor and needy. And he says out of their most severe trial, their overflowing joy... And their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Isn't it amazing? The Macedonians, the poorest of all, said, we want to be part of this offering too. I, I can tell you this. My brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters in Africa, when they heard that we were taking this offering, they said, please, can we be part of it? That so blessed me. They wanted to be part of this great offering. They wanted to be part of the family even out of their poverty, just like the Macedonians, out of their joy, out of the grace of God that's at working in their lives, they wanted to be part of this great offering. This is delight, not duty. This is grace, not legalism. 
This is joy, not hardship. Dear friends, I want us to give this morning. However you give, whether that's in your Sunday gathering, if you're able to gather, whether it's online, whether you could visit the Christ Central website and give into this offering. It's a joyful thing. It's a delightful thing. Anne and I, we just love to give. It brings such joy to our hearts. We loved giving into the COVID-19 appeal and we're going to love to give into this great offering. Whether you're giving a few pence or whether you're able to give thousands of pounds, it's not the amount, it's the heart. And out of the heart, out of the overflow of what God's done in your heart, out of the fact that he's your lover, he loves you and the love of Christ compels you and he's your Lord. He's your master. He's your king. He's your owner. Let's give into this great offering. Now, you might ask, what is this offering for? Well, we've given primarily this year so far to help the relief of poverty. But what we will now want to give is to help our mission together, to strengthen our teams, our apostolic teams around the world, Groups of men and women, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, all working together to do three things. Number one, strengthen your church. Just where you are right now, God wants to strengthen your church. He wants to serve, us to serve your church, to help you to be more effective in your mission, in your gospel proclamation. Whatever city, town or village, country, nation you're in, we want to help strengthen you. We want our teams to help strengthen you and that needs finances it needs to it needs gifts to better help and to release and to give secondly we want to continue to support local churches as they resource community action projects social action we're so thrilled and grateful of our partnership with jubilee plus and uh, we want to continue working with them and helping local churches train equip strengthen you to be a servant in your community for your social action project, whether that's helping out with finance, whether it's helping out with food banks, whether it's helping out clothe and house and whether it's refugee work, whatever the work is that God's called you to. God's called every local church to be serving in some aspect. So we want to help that. We want to stand with projects. We want to support and help. So it's strengthening local churches. It's helping local churches in their social action, their community projects. And thirdly, it's to break through into new areas and new territories. It's to see new churches planted across the world. It's to see new nations reached. Now to do this, we need teams of men and women working together. We're so thrilled that God's raising up apostolic teams across Africa. God's raising apostolic teams across the Americas from Canada and down into Mexico. God's raising apostolic teams in the Middle East. He's raising up apostolic teams right across Europe. We want to stand with those teams. We want to support those teams so that those teams can support you. This is about us working together. Now, it wouldn't be New Frontiers. It wouldn't be Christ Central if we didn't quote what God said to us right at the beginning of New Frontiers, that we can do more together than we ever can on our own. So whether it's a few pence or thousands of pounds, it's the togetherness of this offering that's going to reach your community, reach those who don't yet know Jesus, help the poor and the marginalised, and also reach to the nations. We're called to be and ends of the earth people, whether that's the ends of the earth down your street or whether it's geographically the ends of the earth. This is what God has called us to do. I'd love to pray for you right now. Lord Jesus, I pray for my brothers and sisters as they listen to this, that the motivation would come out of who they are in Christ, would come out of the great love God so loved the world that he gave. The Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. If you love me, keep my commandments. Thank you that the one who loved us is the Son of Man, the glorious, powerful Lord of all. And Lord, we just say to you today, you've got our hearts, Lord, and therefore you've got our pockets. Whatever you want us to give, we'll give Say the word 
I ask you right now, speak and speak grace and speak generosity and speak great joy right now in Jesus' name. We pray. Bless this offering that it helped strengthen local churches, that it helped local churches serve their communities. And let us help us together to go to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Jeremy, for your word today. And thank you for being with us on this Christ Central Sunday. As we finish, I wanted to give you details of how you can give into the offering that Jeremy talked about. It may be that you're watching this as part of a local Christ Central church who are taking up an offering for the work of Christ Central today. If that's the case, you can give into that offering wherever you are around the world and that money we passed on to us shortly. Alternatively, you can give to Christ Central Direct, either online with a bank transfer or by using a credit or debit card. To make an online bank transfer, then you can go to our website at christcentralchurches.org forward slash giving. Scroll down the page till you find the standing order form and on there are our bank details. You can use that information to make an online transfer and please reference your gift offering 2020. If you'd like to give using a credit or debit card, go to christcentralchurches.org forward slash offering. That will take you straight to our online giving platform run by our friends at Stewardship. You can give there using a credit or debit card. And again, please reference your gift offering 2020. If you're a UK taxpayer, then the details for gift aid giving are also there on the same page. Once again, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for your partnership in serving God right around the world. It's so good to be a worldwide family together. We very much look forward to seeing you at a Christ Central event in person very soon, we hope. But meanwhile, may God bless you as you continue to serve him.